Nigel Farage, Alex, your leader, has weighed in finally for the first time on the leadership race. And it is very clear that Nigel sees this as a two horse race between under fire Kemi Badenoch and the rising star Robert Jenrick. So this is what Nigel Farage had to say. Conservative Party conference begins in earnest. Until now, I have refrained from intervening in the upcoming leadership election, but the time has come. Kemi Badenoch has spent weeks positioning herself as tough on immigration, but in 2018 she campaigned in Parliament to increase legal migration and was the biggest champion for students bringing independence. I don't believe a word that she says on anything. Then on Robert Jenrick, he said, formerly a man that believed in nothing, he now pitches himself as the great hardliner. This is almost certainly done for political gain and not out of conviction. He will divide the party. I doubt that Jenrick will last long if he wins. The Conservative Party is split down the middle and the brand is completely broken. So how appropriate that we've got someone from Reform, someone from the Conservatives here. Andrea, let me start with you because I know you're friends with Nigel. How do you feel about his complete takedown of both Kemi Badenoch and Robert Jenrick? Though he may be a friend, but he's still opposition, isn't he? And I'm opposition to him um, at the moment. So um, I think that's to be expected. I mean, I think clearly they don't want any of these. They want a really weak Conservative leader because that's beneficial to them, isn't it? Um, but talking about the actual leadership candidates, um, I mean, I disagree with his comments on um, on Robert. I mean, I was his PPS, um, Dan, and I, I, I know him personally very well. He was at my 50th birthday, him and his wife. And um, I think what people are forgetting, this collective responsibility when you're in government and you're a minister and you have to sign up for that. Um, and of and, course, he did quit. He did quit um, eventually. Yes, I, I'm saying so. For many years, he signed up to collective responsibility. But he is actually, if you look on the public whip, um, Robert is the only one who has defied the, the government whip, the Conservative whip, mm. and the public whip states is defied the, the whip 14 times, but the other candidates, according to that online, hasn't. So he has got a conviction. Yes, he had to um, abide by um, collective responsibility, which I did when I was a minister and I, I was a government whip, um, but he chose his moment like I choose my, chose my moment to rebel. And I think is vindicated himself afterwards. I mean, he's is. Um, I, I think on this show, I've I've called him a born again Christian, a born again Thatcherite. But um, <laughs> it's a born again conservative, honesty, baby. Yeah, well, yeah. In all honesty, Dan, um, he. I know his views from working with him for many years. I mean, gosh, he did fundraisers back in um, 2015 in my constituency for me. He came to my business clubs to speak to businesses. So I've known him quite a, a long time, and. And he, he is a conviction politician. Otherwise, why would he have resigned? And and I, I think you know me well enough, Dan, that I cannot back somebody who is fake. No, you know, and that's a relief. It, it hurt me too that much. is a I relief. Stay in the party. It's a relief for me to hear you say that because I like what Jenrick is saying. So, Alex, just before I get you to respond, I want to show you Jenrick's latest campaign video where it sounds like he's a member of Reform UK. Alex, listen to this. Wahbi Mohammed, a man born in Somalia who aided the plot to blow up the London underground. Akin Doyen Akin Chipe, born in Nigeria, who raped a 13-year-old girl. Murad Mustafawi, an Algerian who recruited for ISIS in Edinburgh. A Ugandan, who we only know as ZM, who beat a man to death in the back of an ambulance in London. What do these men have in common? They're just a few of the people the European Court of Human Rights has stopped us from deporting. The court is also why illegal migration is out of control. It's created an <coughs> arsenal of rights for illegal migrants that are used to gum up our courts and prevent their removal. Our special forces are killing rather than capturing terrorists because our lawyers tell us that if they're caught, the European Court will set them free. So, Alex, look, I put it to you, and by the way, I say this, I'm very honest about this. I voted for Reform UK at the last election. I'm a big supporter of what Nigel is doing at the moment. But isn't Robert Jenrick your worst nightmare? 
Nigel's worst nightmare because he's actually trying to outflank Reform UK from the right. Thanks, Dan, and thank you for your support in the election. It's very much um, appreciated. So um, what a different video that is, uh, or a different pitch from, from Robert Jenrick compared to, you know, you roll back the clock to the you know, 10 years ago when he was elected in the, the New York by-election, you know, facing a very, very strong challenge from UKIP, and he pitched himself uh, very much as a, a more sort of centrist candidate and, and uh, yeah, won that by-election on the back of you know, winning support of Labour voters to, to keep out UKIP. Um, I was a Tory member for 21 years and I was a very active Tory member and I've been a councillor and I've been a candidate and I've done all sorts of things. Um, and I'm the kind of person that really all the candidates for the Tory leadership ought to be trying to win back. Um, but none of them excite me, none of them inspire me and none of them will get, get me to come back. And that includes Robert. I, I don't I just don't believe what he's saying. I think all of the four candidates were complicit in the activities and the record of the last government, whether that be lockdown, whether that be committing to net zero without any meaningful debate, whether it's uh, the highest tax burden since the war, or whether it's you know, effectively open borders. Now, obviously, the, the Labour government that we have in place now is going to be worse. Um, it's quite surprising how quickly how, it's, quite, it's quite surprising how quickly it's it's become worse. But that's not to excuse the, the previous government and all of those who served in it for their element of responsibility in these issues that we're facing. And so that includes Robert. Um, and it's why I think we've seen a poll only in the last couple of days from, from Ipsos, a you know, very well-regarded pollster, showing that uh, you compared to all four of the, the candidates, then the one uh, you know, figure on the right of British politics that stands head and shoulders above all of them uh, when measured uh, as you know, what it takes to be a good prime minister, it's Nigel. It's <laughs> not Robert. It's not James. I knew not you were going to say that. Oh, oh. Are you going to say that? Uh, look, it's been a bit of a car crash of a conference for Kemi Badenoch. The problem is she is not prepared to commit to any policies. So she's speaking in generalities and it got her tied up on the issue specifically of maternity leave. So this was the interview that sparked all the trouble on Times Radio. We need to make sure that we are creating an environment where people can work and people can have more freedom to make their individual well, decisions. Well, it's here nor there for people who can't afford to have a baby, we isn't it? We need to have more personal responsibility. It wasn't any maternity pay and people were having more babies. We need to make sure... Well, that's because that we women often had to not work. They had to stay at home. So is that the solution? That's not... That's, you're putting words in my mouth. The point I'm making, Kate, is that we have got to a point where government isn't working anymore and it's tinkering everywhere. Me giving you an exact amount of what maternity pay should be when circumstances are different everywhere is not where we're well, starting from. Well, statutory maternity pay. It's, it's not where I'm starting from in this campaign. I'm talking about principles. What is it that we believe as Conservatives, rather than throwing out lots of different policy ideas out there? Yeah. We've got to a point where government has become about, tech, about uh, technocratic micro-policy management. That's not what's going to get this country. And the, the MSM were after her at conference today. Watch this. I don't uh, regret things that I didn't say, but thank you for asking. I've said maternity pay is important. Are you all right? Okay, uh, let's be careful with other people. I said maternity pay is important. If we want to fix maternity pay, we need to start with making sure that government isn't intervening in business excessively. Businesses can then pay more. So thank do you, you think your comments have been misinterpreted? Of course they of, just, just watch of, 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 of course they have. There was a long interview, uh, but if you... Please don't, please don't. There was a long interview, but if you're taking 30 second clips, it's very easy to misinterpret. But one of the things that I'm not going to let happen is allow other people to say things that I haven't said, that I haven't said. But Andrea Jenkins, isn't this the problem? Robert Jenrick has been very clear about his policy positions. Kemi is not. No. Um, I mean, we may as well call her Kemi Starmer instead of Kia Starmer because she's playing by the rule book that Kia did in not saying anything. Um, and not committing to anything, yeah. and look what we've ended up with. So I don't risk it on Kemi personally. Um, but you've now, never been a fan of her, have you, Andrea? Sorry? You've never been a fan of her, have you? But first, it's the best time of year. Football is back. We're talking Premier League in the UK and in the US, NFL Sundays and college football Saturdays. With that, the glorious kind of fantasy football lineups is back too. So it's where your own manager comes alive, setting the perfect fantasy roster, screaming at your TV and making last minute waiver moves that either make you a hero 
or the guy everyone ridicules in the group chat. But listen, while you're over here making sure your fantasy team is dialed in, don't let your personal grooming become the guy that gets left on the bench. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to fumble their grooming routine. So that's where Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes in, acting as your all-in-one grooming playbook. From keeping things sharp down below with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra to taking care of those rogue ear and nose hairs with the Weed Whacker 2.0, this is the lineup that will keep you looking and feeling like a champ on and off the field. It will help you feel clean, confident, and ready to dominate your fantasy league. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Groin and Body Hair Trimmer is the franchise player of your grooming roster with precise trimming capabilities. It's reliable, efficient, and gets the job done without fumbling. Whether it's for a date night, weekend tailgate, or just everyday grooming, this is the tool you want on your squad. And no one wants a surprise nose or air hair making a guest appearance on game day, right? So look at this. The Weed Whacker 2.0 handles those details like a pro, keeping you neat and ready to go. No missed tackles in your grooming game. And two free gifts today. The Boxers 2.0 Midnight Bravo and the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag Premium Gear to ensure you're always ready for action, whether at home or on the road. So join the over 10 million men. I'm one of them who trust Manscaped and get ready for kickoff by heading over to manscaped.com. All you need to do is use the code OUTSPOKEN, that's at checkout, and you'll get 20% off and free shipping. Trust me, you'll be drafting the real MVP of grooming this season. So 20% off and free shipping when you use the code OUTSPOKEN at www.manscaped.com. Stay on top of your grooming game and be ready for anything the season throws your way. No, just because she's so arrogant the way she treats people. And, uh, you know, Sir Bill Cash, who's a real stalwart of Brexit, you know, she schooled him like a child on the European Scrutiny Committee. And you don't speak to people like that. You, um, it's about, even with the speaker, you know, I'm, I'm about traditions, actually. And you, you don't speak to people like that. She's very arrogant and I don't like that. Um, so, I mean, regarding the maternity thing, I, I don't know if you saw my tweet yesterday, did you, Dan? Um, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> but you go ahead, explain. Well, I just, again, I don't like hypocrisy. I don't know why she waded into this um, subject because I remember, I think she'd only got in the reshuffle and she only got elected in 2017. She'd only been made a minister a week. Um, it's about a week, two weeks max. And I recall that she she had six months off um, maternity leave after becoming a minister after one or two weeks. And I'm not saying that's Would wrong, she have been but on another minister after that? cover. Um, so, yeah, taxpayers pay for that, of course. Mm. Um, so to, to me, um, if that's good enough for a minister, it's good enough for um, the general public to yeah. take six months off. So that's what I mm. really didn't like. But can I just come back on, before you go to Alex, on yes, of course. Alex's point earlier. Please. Um, you, Alex, you're beginning to sound like the Lib Dems. It's so easy to hark from the sidelines. But when you was in government and you've been bombarded with information from the so-called scientists, it's like rabbit in the headlights. Um, you know, the government try to act on the information that they've been given. Look, Boris has said since, um, I think his initial instinct about herd immunity was right. But but when they've been bombarded, so it's very easy to hark on the sidelines. And also saying about the biggest tax spread, and that I agree as a Conservative, but look at the money they spent um, uh, trying to help with the energy crisis. Um, we saw what lockdown cost. And so, unfortunately, we've got this massive debt, and I would like to see more um, Liz Truss policies, um, mm, you too. know, rather okay, than well, Rishi policies. But it's very easy for you to say that, Alex. So, Alex, um, you're just acting like the Lib Dems. The reform are just Dems. acting like the Lib Dems. You can say whatever you want because you haven't been in government. That's Andrea's point. Well, I've, I've never been called a Lib Dem before. That's uh, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. They, it's they, not. Uh, <laughs> it's <definitely> not. <laughs> okay, I'm fairly sure it's not. Well, in terms of electoral strategy, it might be uh, you know winning 72 seats on a smaller share of the vote than we did. But you know, we could go down a whole different rabbit hole talking about electoral systems and and, and reform. But um, no, uh, yes, the 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 tax and the, and the debt is you know, largely to deal with um, uh, or very large part to deal with with uh, payment for lockdown and furlough and. And and dealing with the you know, energy situation, but again, both of those are problems that, are in no small way, are of the government or the old government's making. In net zero, that's the biggest contributor to um, to energy prices, and the fact that we in this country now, only today, 
you know, closing down our last ever coal power station and on the same day as, as closing uh, the blast furnace at Port Talbot. It's absolutely tragic and devastating. It's but, economic, I mean, it's social, industrial. Converted, yeah, yeah, but your government laid the way for this. Is your, government, is your government in 2019, Theresa May, um, you know, love her um, or not, as the case may be, you know, she enshrined the net zero target in law with very minimal debate. And, and you know, it was conservatives that did that. And, and but got... I think the issue is, um, look, this has been a big global movement, um, this whole net zero. And there's been very few of us who's been brave to speak up about it, in all honesty. And I think that, you know, there, there's also international pressures as well on governments to, to conform to this. And it's only now, actually, that I think that what we've seen in, in other European countries rolling back and, and actually the negative impact of these net zero targets and how unachievable they are, that, that people are seeing it um, with a, a realist perspective now. So hindsight's an easy thing, but I think we're in a different situation than we was five, seven years ago with information. Okay, I, I hope we are. I, I, I hope we are. But for me, it wasn't hindsight. I could see this coming. I left the Conservative Party a conscious decision, and um, because of those two issues, and uh, I'm very glad to to have been been proven right. Okay, j just want to quickly bring in uh, the third candidate, who some people think is a bit of a dark horse and could end up in the final two, and it's James Cleverly who made this 30 second pitch to conference today. I want to make sure this party is back in government at the next possible yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one of the people standing would make a fantastic leader of the party. I would make the best leader of the party. <laughs> I have had the most experience dealing with the media. I'm the only one that's dealt not with one but two great officers of state. I'm the only one that's been the chairman of the party. I'm the only one that's won a general election. If you want to mess about, pick anyone. If you want to win, pick me. Yeah. Andrew, do you think it's possible that he could actually force out Kemi and this could end up being generic versus cleverly in the race? Off? I, I think given the conference, actually, I think she could force out um, Kemi. Now, the thing is about James, I mean, I like James. He's a very funny guy, nice guy. he's witty and he's a nice guy. But I've been in the DFE with him, Department for Education, and he doesn't challenge the civil servants. Yeah. I never saw him challenge civil servants. It was more of a loving because it's probably too nice actually <laughs> so I, I don't think the time um for his leadership is now um that's a no i mean opinion. alex he would be a dream wouldn't he for reform uk and nigel farage nice guy but he's a centrist yeah yeah i, I think that's a, a fair comment um and uh again point to his record in government uh yeah as home secretary presided over you know near record net migration of, of um you know nearly seven hundred thousand. So it's it's uh I think all, all of them, all of them have, have got their, their weaknesses and very few of them have got very, very uh, very many strengths. Um mm. so there's been a couple of funny solution moments. For this, um net, for, for the migration issues because um you've got massive issues in the fact that I think why Jenrick resigned, having been in that department seeing the yes minister civil servants trying to block at every opportunity i mean you know pretty personally like i do dan the way she got made out to be a bully for just doing her job and actually standing up to the civil servants it's not as easy as this um it's a we need the whole institutions ripping apart to rebuild we need an american way of system where we bring in our own civil servants to get legislation through there's so many blocks alex it's not as simple as that so i would like to know how would reform deal with all this because um, rome cannot be built in a day oh, and on, we saw on... what happened to boris um and pretty when they've challenged um challenged them no, on that, Andrew, I absolutely 100% agree. The Home Office, not fit for purpose, hasn't been for years. And that's why one of the um, the things that we would do is establish a completely separate Department of Immigration uh, that would have that and, and yeah, Immigration and Border Security. That would be its remit. That would be its job. That but but, but it. civil servants be working in it? Well, they'd be moved from one department. Like when we founded the Brexit department, you've got to get the, um, you know, that knowledge from somewhere who understands the system. So are you just moving them into a new department, Alex? 
I think you'd want to recruit externally and bring people yeah. in who have proven... Well, see, uh, what I yeah, think we need good. is we need political appointments. That is yeah. what's required. We like need in an America, American, that's what I said. Yeah, exactly. we need an American-style yeah, system. Agree. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that. Plus, if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show, then visit www.outspoken.live.